In this video, I'm gonna show you how to link text animation to markers. So for example, I have a simple text animation and the timing of each word in this text animation is linked to these markers. So for example, this word markers is linked to this marker. If I wanted to adjust the timing of it, if I wanted to bring it in sooner, I would just move on this like this. And just like that, it's gonna come in sooner. This way of working comes in very handy when you create social media posts like this one. You see this everywhere, like words popping in based on the audio. And you can easily adjust the timing of each word by just moving on these markers. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to set up in this video. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so let's get started. We do have our text right here in our composition. We're gonna go into it. We're gonna bring in some properties to animate. We're gonna click on this button and we're gonna bring in position. When you do that, it creates an animator with position in it. So let's call this animator text animation. We're gonna also bring in some more properties. So let's go to add and let's bring in an opacity and let's bring in one more property and blur. So we have all three of them in here. We're gonna set position. This is the starting point on X. Let's start it at 400. That's where it's gonna start animating from. And then blur, we're gonna set X to something like 100. Basically it will have like a fake motion blur. And then opacity, we're gonna set it to zero. So again, this is the starting point. And we do have this wrench selector that we're gonna get rid of, so hit delete. And then we're gonna go to add and bring in a different selector. We're gonna use this expression selector. Here it is. Now we're going to make some adjustments. We have this based on property. We're gonna change it from characters to words. And now it's gonna animate each word at a time. Now we do have this amount property, which is kind of weird. So we're gonna get rid of this expression. I'll click on a stopwatch. And let me kind of talk about the amount property. Really don't overthink this because this amount has to do with what we made here and the default value. So for example, if I set this to zero, it's gonna show us what it was before we made all these changes. So that's the starting point. And then 100 is with all the changes. It's gonna transition into that. So we can easily animate this. So we can set a keyframe here and then we can go forward maybe like 15 frames and set this from 100 to zero. And so now we have this animation right here. Now we can adjust the easing, control shift K for the first one and maybe set it to 35 influence. And then for this one, let's do the same thing. We're gonna set it to 100. So it's gonna have smooth arrival to this keyframe. So if I preview this, you can see it, it, it works. Now what I wanna do next, I want to essentially take this animation and to apply it to each individual text Instead of it animating the entire thing, I want to animate each text at a time. So for that, we will have to do some expressions. So we're gonna go into this amount, Alt click on a stopwatch to create an expression. And in here, we're gonna create our first variable, nm, short for animation. And we're gonna reference this current property. So we're gonna say this property, and then we're gonna say nm, and we're gonna say value at time, and we're gonna say time. Basically, we're grabbing this animation at current time. So if I scroll through here, you can see it works just fine. But the reason why I wrote it this way, because I can push this animation to start it at any time really I want. So for example, what if I want for it to start at one second mark? Well, I would just go to time and I would subtract one second. So as you can see, now it animates starting at one second mark, which is perfect. So this one essentially becomes the delay. So we're gonna call it delay. It's a made up variable that we're gonna define right above here. So we're gonna tell After Effects what delay is. So we're gonna say delay, you are going to be text index. So basically you're gonna be delaying based on each word. So if I click away, notice now it's gonna animate based on each word, which is exactly what I want. Now the problem is it starts at one second mark. That is a problem. So I want to offset this to zero. In other words, I'm gonna subtract one from text index. I'm gonna say subtract one, and just like that, it will push it to zero. And so now it starts at zero and then so on. Now the problem is, again, uh, it's a bit slow to animate. Notice it just takes forever to animate. So the first one animates, then the second one's triggered at the one second mark and so on. So it animates one in a second. So I wanna speed that up. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put both of these in parentheses and we're gonna add something to it. We're gonna say, let's multiply by, we're gonna call delay duration. So again, we're gonna define what that is. So we're gonna say delay duration. We want you to be 0.5, which is half a second. So now it's going to animate in and in half a second. So that's a second. Halfway through here, it's gonna animate the other one. So it sped it up. So essentially in one second, we have two now. So I can do, let's do this, let's do 25, like one fourth of a second. So now in one second, we should have four of them. 
So that's how you speed it up. Now, normally seconds are fine, but I like to work with frames. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over here to time, control click over here to switch to frames. And I want for it to animate every five frames. So every five frames trigger the other animation. So I can't just type five like this because it, it looks at it as seconds. So it's not gonna start until five seconds. So what we need to do, we're gonna use frames to time. We're gonna say, hey, basically convert from frames to time and it will take this five frames and convert it to seconds. So now every five frames, we're gonna have another word. There you go, it's much faster. That's really it. Now, another thing you can do, you can actually create a slider to control this value. So you can select the text layer, navigate over to the effect controls panel and go to expression controls and bring in a slider. And in here, you can do this. We can call this one, let's do delay duration. And uh, in here, we can say, hey, instead of five, let's link you up to this slider and we want the value of that slider. So when you click away, it's obviously not gonna work. It's gonna all come in at once because it's set to zero, but I can say three, it's gonna be a bit faster like this. We can set it to five where it's supposed to. So you can easily keyframe this value and do all kinds of stuff with, with that. So that's basically it. That's how you animate the text. Now next, we're gonna talk about how to link this animation to markers. All right, so we have our text animation. Now let's add markers to our selected layers by pressing asterisk on your keyboard. So it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna add eight of them because we have eight separate words. So we wanna link each marker to each word. So we have eight of them. Let's bring them into our expression. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna take the final amount of all of them, which is eight in this case, and I wanna kind of put it into a variable. So let's do this. We're gonna create a new variable. We're gonna call it num markers number of markers, it's totally made up. And in here I'm gonna say marker, and we want num keys, basically the final amount of markers. You can double check to see if that's true. We can use throw in front of it. As you can see, it shows us eight, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have them in our expression, let's do this. Here's what we need to do. So we have this delay, and it delays it based on the setup we just created. But when we have a marker, I want for this expression to switch into marker mode right? In other words, to delay it based on markers. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, After Effects, use this if we don't have any markers. But as soon as we have one marker or more, then switch to something else. And that's exactly what we're going to do at the bottom here. So we're going to use an if else conditional statement. We're going to say if, and in parentheses, we're going to define a condition. We're going to say, if number markers, if that thing is bigger than zero, in other words, if we have one or more markers, then do this. So if this condition is true, if we have markers, then do code inside of this code block. And what we want to do inside of this code block is to redefine delay. So we're going to say, all right, now ignore this delay. We're going to tell it to be something else. We're going to say delay, you are going to be marker.key, and we're going to use text index, and we're going to grab the time. Basically, this is just to link each text to a marker. So when I do that, notice now it's linked up to each marker. So I can go to the very last one here, I can shift it and you'll see it'll move it. So that's perfect. Now we do have a problem. So watch what happens when I delete one marker. It breaks the whole expression, which is not good. So let's do this. I'm gonna adjust this real quick to make it proper. So this is what it looks like. So we need to redefine delay again. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go before here and we're gonna do the following. We're gonna say text index. If you are less than or equal to a number of markers, then I want you to do this statement right here. So basically, if this statement is true, we wanna to default to this. In other words, if the number of text is less than or the same as the number of markers, then go over here. But as soon as it changes, then go to something else. Then we're gonna do that colon and we're going to copy this and we're gonna add a little change here. So we're gonna say, instead of text index, let's do number of markers. So again, if text index is less than, if the words are less than the markers, we're gonna to default to this. But if the words are more than the markers, then we're gonna to default to that, and essentially it's just gonna animate the whole thing. So it's gonna look something like this. So let me preview this real quick. So watch this, it animates everything in, and then it kind of brings after effects together. So if I delete more, you'll see more. So we have the first one animates, the second one animates, and then the third one brings in the rest. That's basically what it does. So if you wanna split those, you would just add more markers, and uh, there you go. That's basically it. So at that point, 
that's what it looks like. So it's very simple. And really, that's it. We're done. You don't really have to do anything else. Now, if you want to adjust the animation itself, you can go over here back to the animator. And under text animation, we can add more things. We can go over here to property, maybe add scale. And we can adjust the scale, maybe on X, increase it. And notice now we'll have like a different animation. It'll give you something unique. You can completely get rid of some of them. Maybe you want to do what the social media people do, right? You want to kind of pop them in based on opacity. So you can get rid of everything except opacity. And then now it will kind of fade in. You might want to set your keyframes from Bezier to linear, press control and click on one of them. And then it'll make them linear. So just like that, it will kind of pop them in. All right, well, that's the end of this video. I want to thank you for watching it. The free project file is available in the description of this video. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukarmedia.com.